GeForce 210. Definitely one of the worst GPUs put out by NVIDIA. One of them, I said one of them, there are others. Now I never actually had a chance to own one of these myself. I think back then I was still at home using an 8800 GT, uh, either that or an ATI card of some sort. So I had no use for this at work. The ones that needed graphics cards were the uh, AutoCAD machines and they needed something a lot stronger than this. But my question was, how bad is it? How would it do up against Intel's first generation HD graphics? Would it be any better? About the same? Could it be worse? Now this is an i5-650, and these were actually released around the same time, within a few months of each other. So was it worth going out and spending the $30 to $50 that this thing cost back, at the t back in the day, or would it be better just to stick with the integrated graphics? All the tests that are, you're gonna see in this video are gonna be run using this CPU. I also have a GT710 that I'll be including in the charts at the very end, and all the results from there I re-ran everything with the CPU, so that way it's not skewed using something more powerful because we all know that the first gen chips sucked. So was it worth the 30 to 50 bucks or should you have stayed with the integrated graphics? Well, that's the question, let's find out. Now the 210 only had a 31 watt TDP and it often sold for less than $50 US. Now when we look at it with GPU-Z, we can see that it supports more features than Intel's HD graphics, but other than that, they're somewhat similar, as close as uh, integrated graphics can get to an actual GPU and neither had very good specs. So first up, what if you just bought the 210 to use in a regular desktop PC for internet or other basic 2D tasks? Well, then it might work. YouTube, for instance, at 1080, plays absolutely fine on the 210. While it only sort of plays okay with the integrated graphics, you can also see on the Intel side, the highest I could get it to display was 720. No matter what the resolution was set to, it immediately dropped down to 720 when I viewed this full screen. No matter though, because it can't even do 720 without dropping frames. Okay, so how does it do with 3D? Well, first I ran the Sanctuary benchmark, and although it wasn't a great score, the 210 managed to render at least twice the speed of the Intel HD graphics. With Heaven, it was a similar story. And although the HD graphics scored the average FPS of 7.6, it appears to me to be far less than that, maybe three FPS. Hopkins boy. Where'd you come from? We've been expecting you. Welcome to Bullworth Academy. Bully, which was released in 2006, was a few years before either of these, but neither of them could even manage 30 FPS at 720. The integrated graphics, however, actually pulled ahead slightly, but for the most part, they rendered at about the same speed. The headmaster is expecting you, Hopkins, in his study. Okay. His study is over there, boy. In the main building? Don't keep Dr. Crabblesnitch waiting. He's Portal 2 was released about a year after both of these, but it was playable at 720 on each, although not great. And as you can also see, they also rendered at nearly identical speeds as each other. This is the 2005 release of Need for Speed Most Wanted. As you can see, both are playable, but the 210 won this round, rendering on average 30 FPS faster. Half-Life 2 Episode 1 was released in 2006. Now the Intel side benchmarked on average 10 FPS lower, and it had a lot of input lag. Now it's only 10 FPS, but the 210 felt far smoother when playing. Now with Unreal Tournament 3, the integrated graphics refused to run at 720. So I ran both tests at 1024 by 768. But even at that resolution, the integrated graphics could only average around 43 FPS, while the 210 averaged 92. This might seem good, but to put it in context, my GT 1030 could easily score over 500 FPS at 1080. So yeah, we're at the bottom of the barrel here. So let's check out some GTA games. With Vice City, here are the settings I used for all the tests, and both were absolutely fine. But once again, the 210 scored about 50 FPS higher, and it felt a lot smoother.
The integrated graphics felt clunky and had loads of input lag. In San Andreas, they both performed about the same, but the integrated graphics actually benched a few FPS higher. But once again, the 210 had far less input lag, and also, everything just looked better. With GTA 4, as usual, here are the settings I used, and once again, I had to drop down to 1024 by 768 just to even get it to run on the integrated graphics. I also dropped all settings to low, and I dove straight for the benchmark. The 210 scored 15 FPS, while the integrated scored 10. So yeah, the 210 did better, although not by much. Looking at the graphs, the difference between the 210 and 710 is huge. It makes the 710 look like some high-end graphics card. That is until you look at the numbers. You realize that the 210 is far below what we consider to be in the low end these days. So do I think it was worth it in its time? Absolutely not. Why would I pay any amount of money to get something that barely outperforms what's already included in the CPU? That is, if I already owned an Intel. Maybe as an upgrade to an older setup, maybe, you know, a Core 2 Quad or a Phenom. But even then, people often already had GPUs. An 8800 GT from a few years earlier would easily blow this thing away. And at that point in time, you could probably buy one used for the same price or slightly more than the 210. Yeah, it was a completely worthless graphics card, and I'm not even sure why NVIDIA even invested the time into creating it. Yep, so it's just a quick video. If you're interested, in a couple days when I have a chance, I will edit and upload the triple benchmark, which is the 210 integrated graphics and the 710 all together, and it'll just be a simple video just showing the, you know, the different runs. Um, and you'll see uh, how much better the 710 is to the to the 210, which is kind of funny considering how bad the, the 710s are in, in gaming. So that's that, and uh, well, thanks and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.